African-American jazz saxophonist and minister Kenny Rogers and his Chinese and Puerto Rican wife Evelise, who worked as a fashion designer and caterer, were expecting their third child and they knew just what to call her. Combining their names together, they came up with the name Khalees. The couple went on to have one more child and the family of six settled down in Harlem. When she wasn't surrounded by love and acceptance in her family's middle-class household, Khalees told the independent website she was too black to fit in with the white kids at her private elementary school and too middle-class to hang out with the kids in her Harlem neighborhood. Despite feeling snubbed by her classmates, Khalees' parents always taught her to be strong, confident, and to embrace her individuality. These survival traits stayed with her as she entered New York's LaGuardia High School of Performing Arts, where she learned to play the saxophone. She told Vice website that after high school, her plan was to perform on Broadway. However, life had other things in store. She told the LA Times that she was a rebellious teenager who hated school. Things at home were starting to decline as well. After a major argument with her mom, Khalees left home at the age of 16. Problems between her parents continued and they eventually divorced. Khalees worked numerous jobs while still attending high school and joined a singing group with some friends. Her best friend was cordial with another girl who was working with a guy named Pharrell Williams, who was one half of a production duo called The Neptunes. The friend coordinated a meeting for Khalees to meet Pharrell and his music partner, Chad Hugo. When they heard Khalees sing, they loved her unique voice and decided to work with her. The trio formed a tight bond and became close friends. After graduating from high school, she continued working on music and singing background for various artists. She enrolled in college but dropped out after one semester. She also worked as a bartender and sales associate to make ends meet and was finally able to get a decent apartment with her boyfriend. She was the breadwinner in their relationship and told the LA Times, he didn't have a job and I worked 10 hours a day, six days a week. I bought our food, our clothing, everything. With some help from the Neptunes, she recorded a demo tape that landed on a desk at Virgin Records and they were interested. Sadly, two days before Khalees signed her record deal, her dad passed away from a heart attack. The Neptunes became the sole producers of Khalees' first project. Whenever possible, they would also hook her up with singing gigs. When they were asked to produce ODB's song, Got Your Money, they had Khalees sing on the chorus. Her appearance on the record caught listeners' attention and created some hype for her solo album. Khalees told Chronic website she trusted the Neptunes and they all gelled so well together. One song the Neptunes wrote particularly entitled Caught Out There really spoke to Khalees. After recording the angry anthem with lyrics such as I hate you so much right now, she played the song for her then boyfriend. Khalees told the LA Times it was a little uncomfortable for him to hear the track, but he was cool with it. Eventually things went sour between them. Khalees told the newspaper, then when we broke up, I had even more reason to sing the song. Her debut album, Kaleidoscope, was released in 1999, and its jazz and rock influences changed the parameters of contemporary R&B. It peaked at number 23 on the Billboard Top R&B Hip Hop Albums chart. Khalees didn't receive much support from mainstream radio or her record label. She told The Fader that she was informed her music wasn't black enough. Execs even went as far as to say her screams on Caught Out There weren't typical for a black artist. Just like in her teenage years, Khalees began to rebel. She performed Caught Out There on the Chris Rock show, and towards the end of her performance, she pulled out a pink rhinestone weapon and waved it around. She stated to the fader the weapon was fake, and she thought it was an adorable prop, but it opened her up to even more backlash from her label. Aside from her label being disappointed by her performance on the Chris Rock show, they also gave her a list of things she needed to fix, like her colorful hair. Khalees said, and then all of these things started to happen, like, well, now that we're here, let's look at the fact that you've gained some weight. Next came the rumors she was in a relationship with Pharrell. Khalees told All Hip Hop they were close, like family, but there was nothing romantic going on. Khalees and the Neptunes headed back to the studio to work on her follow-up album entitled Wonderland. The album was released overseas, but it didn't receive a North American release date because the execs at Virgin Records didn't know how to properly market her. She left the U.S. and spent some time in Europe. 
Upon her return, her label wanted her to re-record some of the songs on Wonderland so it could be released to the U.S. audience. Khalees told The Independent she refused to do so and was released from her contract. Thankfully, the Neptunes launched Star Trek Entertainment in a joint venture with Arista Records, and Khalees was signed to the label alongside the group Clips. She was working on her third album when a new love entered her life. In 2002, she attended Puff Daddy's MTV VMA after party and was approached by a man who introduced himself by saying, I've been looking for you for years and I want to make you my wife. That man turned out to be New York rapper Nas. Khalees told The Independent, I just knew this was the person I was supposed to be with. When they discovered their fathers had both played jazz music together many years ago, they knew they were destined to be together. Nas even got a tattoo of a topless Khalees on his forearm. However, Khalees told The Guardian, there were red flags all over the place. She said, I was really young and didn't know that love isn't enough. Nas told Complex website, he also saw problems with their relationship immediately. He added, but it was a problem I was attracted to. He went on to describe Khalees as a mixture between Courtney Love and a mahogany queen. Khalees headed back to the studio to work on the album Tasty. The Neptunes produced a handful of tracks, but Khalees also reached out to some of her music friends to help out on the album, including Andre 3000 and Raphael Sadiq. Her new boo Nas also made an appearance on the song In Public. Tasty was released in 2003, and the album cover featured a sultry image of Khalees with a huge hickey on her neck. Tasty became a global success. Her song Milkshake earned her a Grammy nomination, and Khalees was on top of the world. In 2004, she and Nas got engaged. That same year, after the Sony Records and BMG merger, she found herself with Jive Records, and her relationship with the Neptunes came to an abrupt end after Khalees made a startling revelation. While chatting with The Guardian, Khalees said that at the time she signed her initial contract, everything between her, Pharrell, and Chad were supposed to be split equally three ways. She was too young to understand everything the contract was detailing, but she trusted them, and it came back to bite her. Khalees told ID Vice she didn't receive any money from her first two albums because her friends ripped her off. She also told The Guardian she was, quote, blatantly lied to and tricked and pointed the finger at the Neptunes, their management, and their lawyers. She didn't even realize she wasn't making any publishing money or royalties because she was living off the money she made from touring. However, when she confronted the Neptunes about her unfair contract, Khalees said, their argument is, well, you signed it. She decided it was best to just stay focused on her upcoming wedding. She told The Independent, I just want to be happy and kids would be good. I want the whole family thing. In January 2005, Nas and Khalees got married in Atlanta in the presence of 175 family and friends in a Poison Ivy themed ceremony. Khalees broke tradition and played by her own rules by wearing a green Matthew Williamson wedding dress. As the new Mrs. Jones, Khalees became a stepmom to Nas's daughter Destiny Jones from a previous relationship. The couple moved to Atlanta and began working on music while collaborating with each other from time to time. Her fourth studio album, Khalees Was Here, dropped in August 2006. She finally felt redeemed when the song Bossy received a lot of play on R&B radio stations. Khalees also received another Grammy nomination. But despite the album's success, she wasn't content. While speaking with Vice magazine, she indicated she was tired of the celebrity lifestyle, stating, I'm not willing to give what it takes and I'm too opinionated, and I'm too sensitive, and I don't care enough, and I really like my privacy. Before she could bow out of the industry on her own accord, she got locked up in March 2007 in Miami Beach, Florida, after she was accused of screaming racial obscenities at two female police officers who were posing as streetwalkers. According to TMZ, Khalees charged towards the officers and had to be restrained by her friends. She was later acquitted of the charges. Months later, she got dropped by Jive Records. Next came a hiatus from music. She trained at Le Cordon Bleu Culinary School and discovered that cooking with different sauces was her passion. In late 2008, she found out she was pregnant. Her happiness turned to stress when she reportedly discovered Nas had been cheating on her. Khalees also claimed their marriage had turned physical. 
In an interview with Hollywood Unlocked, she said, it wasn't good ever, but it got progressively worse. We were drinking too much, smoking too much, spending too much. Khalees said he would hit her and she would hit back, but most of the time he was too wasted to remember what happened. Nas denied her allegations in an Instagram post and accused her of subjecting him to hostile behavior during their marriage. While all of this was going on behind the scenes, Wendy Williams announced on her radio show in November 2008 that there was a video floating around of Khalees in an intimate encounter with a New York rapper named Infrared. Khalees' rep said Khalees was not the woman featured in the video and that her lawyers would be filing a defamation suit against the rapper. Khalees had other things to worry about, though. In April 2009, while still pregnant, she filed for divorce. Nas told VH1's Behind the Music that Khalees took all her stuff out of their home, and the only thing she left behind was her green wedding dress. Nas later posed with the gown on the cover of his album entitled Life is Good and covered up her face on his tattoo with the image of a lion's head. According to the New York Daily News, Khalees went into labor and was accompanied by her mom and her sister, while Nas was reportedly out at a nightclub getting, quote, hammered off champagne. The Daily News reported, once he heard Khalees was in labor, he rushed to the hospital, only to be denied entry because he was intoxicated. Their son, Knight Jones, was born on July 22, 2009. She and Nas would battle it out in court over child support for years. She signed with Will I Am's record label, and the album Flesh Tone was released in May 2010. The album included two hit songs, a cappella and Fourth of July Fireworks, which were successful on the U.S. and U.K. dance charts. After a four-year break, Khalees re-emerged in 2014 after filming a pilot for a cooking channel show entitled Saucy and Sweet. She also released her album Food, which landed at the number six spot on the Billboard 200. She launched a sauce brand called Bounty and Full in 2015 and published a cookbook. She disappeared once again, up until she gave birth to a baby boy named Shepard in November 2015. E! News reported the identity of her child's father was unknown, but the Daily Mail did some digging and found out the father is real estate agent and photographer Mike Mora. He and Khalees reportedly tied the knot almost a year prior to her giving birth. These days, Khalees, her husband, and her sons live on a remote farm about two and a half hours away from Los Angeles, which is perfect for Khalees since she enjoys her privacy. She also became co-owner of Bounty Farms in Colombia, which grows coffee, tomatoes, and other produce. Her 2001 album Wonderland finally made its U.S. debut on streaming services in 2019. It's unclear if Khalees' shady record deal has prohibited her from making a profit on any of the sales. In 2020, she was announced as the host of the Netflix show called Cooked with Cannabis. She also went on a brief tour in 2020 to celebrate the 20th anniversary of her debut album Kaleidoscope. Looking back at her time in the spotlight, she told The Guardian her career was all about fighting against men who continuously tried to keep her down. With her talent, she should have experienced way more success than she did. But she's not someone who chases fame anyway. She told Essence, being famous has never validated me, ever. I've never cared if people liked me or didn't like me. Either way, I'm cool.